France in lane number three, the favourites here in the final of the men's lightweight coxless four lane order, top of the pitch of Poland two in one, Germany one in two, France in three, Ireland in four, Germany two in five, and Great Britain are closest to us in lane at number six, Simon Jones, Mike Hennessy, Dave Curry, Nick English to make up this four, and already you can see how fast the crews in the middle who have uh, qualified from the semi-finals are. Great Britain being dumped in the first 10 strokes. Down an event, uh, lightweight event. Lightweight rowing is uh, your event. We haven't really qualified a quick crew to challenge. These crews are building for Beijing in, in 2008 here. A lot of work to be done. Robin Williams brought in. Good guy. Yes, he's doing very well with, uh, with this change around in attitude. Uh, but also they've got to develop a lot of power. And, um, and I think that's something that he's going to be working on. But uh, there are two guys here, Nick English and uh, Mike Hennessy, who were in the British four that came 12th in Athens. Um, so a bit of experience there with some new blood brought in here. But GB are the slowest uh, of the qualifiers and they will be hard pressed to uh, move out of the sixth position, the sixth and last position. But anything better than that would be terrific. But just being here is very good. So the race developing between Ireland there in lane number five. Paul Griffin to the left of your pitcher sets the uh, pace there for Ireland alongside them in lane three, France. France with the winners of Dorney three weeks ago. And the French are looking pretty swifty here. 500 down, they're through the first mark. Been uh, just a little ahead of Ireland, Poland and Great Britain in fifth place. So as we come now into the second 500 meters, all the crews will come off their sprint. They'll start to look to settle down into an easy pace. I'll give them some speed. France looking the better of all the crews so far. There's a man sitting at three in the French crew, uh, Jean-Christophe Bet. He's the only person really with the experience these are all new people otherwise but he was uh, third at the world championships in 2001 so he goes quite a long way back there uh, but next to them Ireland they were second in Munich at the World Cup and then sixth in Athens so that's probably the the, uh, the, the banker crew that's the one that's got the, uh, the the continuity and you'd expect them really to uh, to motor on in the second half look at the head breeze in this uh, first part of the race you can see the water bouncing down the hull of the boat we come through 7.50, gone. Great Britain now on your left of your pitcher. You see the gap and the difference in quality here. Great Britain really been a, at a race of their own by with Germany 2 in lane number 5. Well, I like the way the Irish there are hunting down the, uh, the fast-starting French crew. Uh, they've got some very good, solid uh, power in their boat, and they're sitting very low in the boat and just driving the legs. Good power coming through the stroke, and the French a little bit more fluffy. You can see the water flying around their blades a bit. And the Irish certainly just very methodically just pushing the power through the water with their, their blades, with their oars. Through the 1,000 metres, the final of the men's lightweight coxless falls and Ireland and France are continuing the tussle that they've had since the first stroke. Great Britain are in this uh, race. Just go through the pitcher there, closest to us in lane number six. A lane order for you, the top of the pitcher. In one, Poland two. In lane two, Germany one. In lane three, France. Ireland in four, Germany two are in lane number five. And Great Britain are in lane number six. Great Britain really struggling. They didn't get into the race in the first 10 strokes and they've struggled ever since. And Ireland and France have been setting their pace. They're the two crews that have been looking pretty poised through this in an event that you've got to be quick to get into, Dan. Gary, it's interesting to see, you know, over the last few years, you've seen the British lightweights walking carrying their boats out, water out. If they turn sideways, you can hardly see them. They're so slight. And uh, you see the Danes and the, uh, and the Irish, much tougher, much stronger. And I think what British uh, lightweights have to do is to build up their power over the next 18 months, really get into the gym, build up that middle of the stroke power that they need to keep them in the middle of the race here. Because it's where they, they get off okay, but then they haven't the power to sustain it. And through the middle of the race, that's where it counts. And that's where the Danes are so good and why they've been world champions. They're not here today, but they'll be certainly uh, around when it comes down to the, uh, the world championships in, in Japan. You can see there that picture we just had across, spread across all the crews and the difference in class between the race leaders, France and Ireland, down to Great Britain who are trailing. That's lane number two, Germany one. As we come back out, we'll see Ireland, France pushing on hard. Coming up to the next timing mark, 1500 meter mark, 500 to go. France have just um, resumed the lead again. It was it's been going France, Ireland, France, Ireland all the way down as each of the crews have been pushing. 
We're going to look for a really good closing stage here now. It's the lightweight event, lightweight men's conquest form, which means the individual maximum can't, be, can't exceed 72 and a half kilograms, and the crew average can't exceed 72 kilograms. They've got to be spot on the money for that. France has responded well to the uh, to the Irish push there in the middle of the race. They're rowing really quite 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 a lot better now. They're, they're, they're stretching out, and they've done a very very good squeeze up to 36 strokes a minute there as they came through the last into the last 1500. Fabian Tillene in the stroke seat leading his guys on. We're looking there at uh, Germany one in lane number two. Axel Schuster in the stroke seat. Got to keep his head up again because it's going to be this is without a doubt it's, it's 2:50 to go here now. It's painful. But in this tight race, and it is a tight race, every stroke counts. And you get good strokes and good bow speed by keeping that posture. But race leaders at the moment, lane number three, France. Ireland in lane four, haven't given up again. They've got to watch Germany in lane number two coming on strong. Germany now have started to find some speed. The French are responding. Up goes the raid from France in lane number three. They were winners at Dorney three weeks ago. And they're moving along quite nicely, but the race is on, the battle is on for the silver medal. The German crew now rising again on the home crowd. The home crowd are urging them forward, urging them to the line. Ireland hanging on, hanging on by sheer determination. Great Britain moving up into fifth place. Out front though, France is going to get it over the line. And we'll have to see, oh so close, maybe Germany have got it. Maybe Germany just pips through, but we'll wait and see. The Irish crew has got their heads down. There's Great Britain coming through in fifth place so they've had a pretty good last 500 but it wasn't enough to get them onto the medal podium and that's what it takes it out to to get onto the medal podium out front though france germany and ireland and we'll get the confirmation very shortly so there's the confirmation france in first